Okay, so let's talk about the forces of evolution and what we have that control those. So the Hardy-Weinberg principle was really unlikely to really be met in a real population because we do have competition. You do have natural selection. You have these species going into and out of the population. And so we really, it was not a really well thought out plan for that, but it does help to explain for non-evolutionary species, which most species we don't see an evolutionary change within our lifetime, it really does help to explain how we have these genetic differences. And so it is a good factor. But there are three real factors to evolution. They're mutation, gene flow, and genetic drift. So mutation. Well, obviously we have mutations occur. Some of those mutations are silent. We don't ever see them. Some of those mutations really can make a change in the gene pool itself. Then we have gene flow. This is a rate of migration. Um, and at its height, you can see a significant effect. So when we have gene flow, you see um, genes coming into and out of a population. We can see that you can have um, intercontinental changes. And so this is something we see a lot in birds. We also see it a lot in the human species. And then genetic drift. Now, genetic drift has two real effects, and the bottleneck effect and the flounder effect we're going to talk about. But genetic drift is a random change in allele frequencies that occur in much smaller populations. And so, like the Galapagos Islands, this would be an example of that. Okay, so let's talk about the bottleneck effect. This occurs in populations that it suddenly gets much, much smaller, which we're seeing a lot in species that become extinct. And then we have our flounder effect, and this occurs and we have a few individuals that start or found, start a new population within a species. And so here's our bottleneck effect uh, diagram. So the large shore is accepting a large population. And then all of a sudden you're trying to get a drastic reduction in that. So you can barely get any of the marbles to come in out of the big jar. And what you do get out, that becomes your surviving individuals. And they're going to make your next generation. Now, no. You, in the first parent population, you have all these you have these little red marbles. We don't see that coming out because that did not go through the bottleneck, and those species did not survive. So we re actually reduced um, the population to just blue and yellow marbles instead of having any of the reds. So we're reducing the amount of genetic variation. So because we have a loss of genetic variation, we're going to talk about the cheetahs. Uh, they have very little genetic variation in the gene pool because there's very few of those species. And because of this, they've only been around or haven't, they've barely avoided extinction um, from the last ice age and have experienced this for the last 10,000 years. And so cheetahs actually have, like any species that becomes part of the bottleneck effect, have a lot of problems within the species. And we start to see some diseases possibly pop up from this loss of variation. Here's a picture of our beautiful cheetahs. Then we have the founder effect. Now remember, this is when very few individuals find or found a new species. And so because of this, the alleles from the founders may be different from the alleles of the population they left. So if we look at this, we have yellow and red um, ladybugs, the founder species was only the red ladybugs. They went to an island and said, on your island, all you see is red ladybugs. And so those are the two big ones. Now let's talk about natural selection in just a second.